I'm in a great book and it's called The Dispossessed. No old doors anymore, the mirror's turned its back. Fears is his best by danger as I rock the boat. I have to leave this world, publish what I wrote. I travel to Europe on proprietarians. This freedom and my work can never turn my back. Hi, I'm Michael Levers, and this is Fit to Be Read. The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin, published in 1974, is a Hugo, Nebula, and Locus award-winning work of art. A standalone novel set among Le Guin's Hainish cycle universe, The Dispossessed features themes of revolution and anarchy, capitalism, socialism, and collectivism, feminism, utopia, and more. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of Le Guin's books, or if you plan to. I recommend The Dispossessed as great literature, science fiction or otherwise, and suggest that it will satisfy readers looking for solid storytelling with strong societal examination. I recommend The Dispossessed for science fiction fans who demand well-developed characters. I recommend The Dispossessed as an excellent starting point for those looking for an entry point to the Ursula Le Guin catalog, and I recommend this book to those who like the idea of comparing and contrasting political, economic, anthropologic, and or sociological systems through a science fiction lens. This spoiler-free review will include enough to enjoy for those who've already read the book, as well as introduce the novel to those of you who are considering reading it, and don't want me to give anything away. At the end of the review, I'll share fully spoiler-free my five likes and five dislikes for the novel, Let's talk world building. As mentioned, this is part of Le Guin's Hainish cycle. The setting is far future and basically stars and planets in a reasonable vicinity to our own. Many of the planets have human and human-esque evolved civilizations and with the guidance of Hain, the oldest of these worlds, everyone is starting to connect and communicate and even in some cases, form or join a confederacy of inhabited worlds. Two worlds are featured in the Dispossessed, Eurus and Inares. Eurus is a planet with a number of individual countries with large populations, vibrant culture, innovation, technology, and active political conflict. Anaris is a satellite of Eurus. This moon hosts a much smaller population, no government, less technology and innovation, and a collectivist culture. Anaris also hosts the story's main character, Shevik. Shevik is a physicist with a brilliant mind. Because Anaris is more about the community than the individual, Shevik's brilliance and one-of-a-kind brain for physics does not carry much value on his home world. The Dispossessed alternates settings by chapter. The chapters set on Eurus follow Shevik's near-present reality working on temporal theory and physics, discovering how those on Eurus live, and contemplating how his innovations in physics might benefit all and not just the powerful few. There is crossover between the two timelines as Shevik's work in temporal theory involves the study and evaluation of two conflicting concepts of time referred to as sequency and simultaneity. How his endeavors toward the radical theories are viewed or supported in each world lays the foundation for much of Shevik's own personal conflicts and impressions of both his home world and his host world. The chapters set on his homeworld of Inaris invest heavily in world building. Le Guin presents, and this adjective gets thrown around quite a bit with this book, an ambiguous utopia where there is no government and everybody contributes their time and efforts in service to the community and shun materialism because sharing is caring. The chapters on Inaris highlight Chevex to some degree coming of age while providing the reader with context around Chevex's past experiences leading to his eventual travel to Eurus. How Anaris became this ambiguous anarchist utopia is not a spoiler and it's not a secret. Le Guin lays it out right from the start. Nearly 150 years ago, revolutionaries on Eurus were appeased and offered Anaris to set up an independent colony and stop mucking up the works on Eurus. Anarans jumped at the opportunity, cut off all but the most basic of trade arrangements, and kept to themselves and away from the loathed, materialistic, proprietarian neighbors. The genius of Le Guin's writing is that she creates vast layered worlds and deep and layered characters to walk around in said worlds. In The Dispossessed, the examination of the nearly opposite societies 
works because she approaches each with sincerity, deep consideration and study, and without a heavy hand. Here now are my five likes and five dislikes, still spoiler free, for Ursula K. Le Guin's Fit to be Read, The Dispossessed. Like number one, the absence of overwhelming bias. What a mastery of storytelling that Le Guin can present so much passion without being heavy handed in one direction or the other. You could call Shevek an understated character, but not an undeveloped one. There are no moments that jump off the page, which makes this an easy book to not spoil, but in every scene, you feel the intensity of Shevek's thoughts and confusion, feelings, his entire being. Like number two, also intense is the critique of the two societies. Since the dispossessed, countless science fiction novels have presented capitalist, socialist, totalitarian, communal societies. More often than not, it ends up being not much more than superficial window dressing. Le Guin extends to the reader the experience of what life would feel like to live there, not just what it looks like. Like number three, the prose is untouchable. This isn't a profound statement talking about Le Guin. It's to be expected. No words are wasted and the pacing is absolutely perfect. Like number four, the novel evokes emotion. I ranked this book number eight on my top 210 science fiction books episode this year, and the value of the reading experience for me was the book's ability to make me feel consistently at every moment. I did not only feel what Shevek was feeling in each moment, I thought deeply about what he was experiencing and what it meant. Regardless of what emotions are evoked in a reading experience, whether those emotions are positive, negative, or neutral, I usually want to be moved by what I'm reading. I don't want to just enjoy a story, I want to feel it. Like number five, as much as I love science fiction, I always struggle with complex physics. The ideas of sequence and simultaneity in this book definitely fall in the looks cool even if I don't understand it fully category. There's a passage on page 223 and 224 for those who really want to get into this that I found to be a very interesting and relatable discussion on physics. Dislike number one, character work in The Dispossessed is phenomenal. Every character in the book belongs there. If I'm nitpicking, I didn't love Veya. She's a necessary character. But if I were to single out one character as being a cliche, it's her. She's necessary to the Eurus storyline and adds to it. Just not my cup of tea. Dislike number two, really, really nitpicking. There's a nod to Shevek's name as there was a ball bearing type of tool that was named after a previous individual named Shevek. This stood out because it immediately took me out of the story. Naming something after somebody sends up a huge propertarian individual celebration red flag, and I wasn't expecting that. Dislike number three, while so much is revealed about the characters and the worlds through an economy of words, more details about Eurus would have been welcomed. Relative to Anares, the examination of Eurus was a little bit shortchanged. Dislike number four, this could also go in the like column. You can't get lost in this and read it in really long stretches. The read is a journey, and through the journey is this great comparison and contrast and deep thoughts about types of societies and political systems. It's not a journey to take in one sitting. So in one sense, you can draw this read out, and in another, it never really gets unput downable. Dislike number five, before the end of the year, I expect to put out my top 25 science fiction series of all time episode, and I'll definitely have Le Guin's Hainish Cycle included and ranked. Chronologically, The Dispossessed sits towards the front of the series and has elements connecting it to the Hain universe. I would have liked even more connection to that larger Hainish universe. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael Leverts, and this is Fit to be Read.